freedom must continue to spread from the highest heavens to the depths of the sea. This is Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. The surprise communist attack on the Central Kerbin Alliance Network's Aerospace Research Center has highlighted the need for better information about Kerbin surface. These new technologies will allow the Alliance to place long-term satellites in orbit around Kerbin in order to observe its surface. This will both aid in our understanding of the planet and give better intelligence on the activities of the communists. With these new pieces of scientific equipment, the research center has been tasked with providing multispectral and altimetry surveys of the surface of Kerbin. While it will take some time to fully survey the planet, this should give the Alliance an edge over the communists. Construction of the survey satellite will be centered around Probodobodyne's new HECS guidance unit. The new Z200 rechargeable battery bank should allow the probe to remain active even when it's on the dark side of the planet. Orbit will be achieved using a two-stage rocket. The upper stage will need at least 2,500 meters per second of delta V to carry the satellite all the way from the upper atmosphere into its polar orbit. The multispectral scanner and the radar antenna are both from the mod ScanSat. The mod makes satellites a lot more useful in the game. Much of the information provided by the mod can be accessed using CurbNet, but it's my opinion that ScanSat is just more intuitive and easier to use. These pieces of survey equipment will require a lot of electricity when in use, so engineers are covering the satellite and solar panels to keep everything charged. In addition to the power requirements of running the survey equipment, it will also take quite a bit of power to transmit this data back down to Kerbin. So the engineers are recommending additional electric storage be added to this satellite. The upper stage uses a Terrier engine, which has great vacuum-specific impulse, but it doesn't have an alternator. Thus, the solar panels become very important for longer duration missions. The upper stage is now complete and has just over 3,000 meters per second of delta V. The lower stage will need about 1,500 meters per second of delta V in order to push this thing into orbit. While the swivel engine is one of the heavier engines available to the program, it is able to gimbal and will make control on ascent a lot easier. The top of the craft is not very aerodynamic, so the fins on the bottom of the rocket will help keep it stable as it ascends through the lower atmosphere. And even the upper stage will be firing when it is low enough in the atmosphere to need additional aerodynamic stabilization. With the added mass of the fins, the rocket will need just a little bit extra fuel on the lower stage to ensure it has enough delta V to reach orbit. Because the intended orbit is polar, the rocket design and flight path will need to account for Kerbin's rotation, which its speed at the equator is about 180 meters per second. This is why the rocket is pointed slightly to the west as it ascends northward. We have Miko, and ignition on the second stage is good. The second stage needs to make two burns, one to raise the apoapsis above 100,000 meters, and the second to circularize the orbit. And with the craft safely out of Kerbin's atmosphere, it can begin scanning its surface. It looks like the orbital insertion burn is going well. Everything looks nominal. It will take a while for the craft to fully scan Kerbin's surface, so we'll just leave it up here doing its thing, and we will return to it later to collect the scientific information from it. As much of Kerbin is covered by water, the Central Kerbin Alliance Network needs to gain a better understanding about what's underneath the waves. In this video, I'm going to be making use of a newer mod called the Life Aquatic. It includes both newer parts and contracts for exploring the seas. The Life Aquatic mod is made by the same author as the Kerbinside Remastered Giving Aircraft a Purpose mod. Now this is a submarine that's under construction, but the wheels are going to be used to take this craft from the runway into the water. Maneuvering a craft around under the water is similar to flying in the atmosphere, so these control surfaces will help. I'm still very new to using this mod, so I'm not really sure how to use it the best way. Maybe someone else is more familiar with the Life Aquatic than I am and you are more familiar with the engines and how many intakes you should have and how much solar panels and the best way to power the craft or whatever. If you know more about this mod, I would be grateful if you would share some details in the comments about how well you have used it. The part of designing crafts with this mod that I think I struggled with the most is trying to calculate how much of the ballast containers I need. When I've made submarines in the stock game before, I have used the ore containers, and even that was a lot of trial and error to figure out how many ore tanks and exactly where I should put them. 
So if you are definitely more familiar with this mod than I am, I would love to know how best to calculate that. As is, this craft is a little too buoyant. I needed to put more of the mass from the ballast tanks on here. If you know a good way to calculate that, please share that in the comment section. I would love to know how to better use this mod. This is a bit of an introductory mission, so the craft just needs to run a few tests. The Kerbals need to sail out to a point that is reasonably close to the Space Center. From there, they need to dive down to about 300 meters, where the craft will need to maintain its depth for approximately five seconds or so. Once it is done that, the craft then needs to descend all the way down to the sea floor, and then a Kerbal will have to get out of the craft. The depth at that location is actually around a kilometer deep, which in real life is far deeper than you'd really want to be doing just regular scuba diving. You'd really want to be in a submarine or something at that depth. Once all that is done, the Kerbals merely need to take their sub back to our research center and that will fulfill this contract. Future missions with this mod look to include other things such as rescuing Kerbals and even crafts that have sunk to the bottom of the seafloor. So I look forward to playing more with this mod. I hope you do as well. The brave Kerbal Submariners have gone to the seafloor and completed all aspects of the mission except for recovery of the craft near the Space Center. A craft that is able to travel beneath the waves on Kerbin definitely has applications as far as rescuing Kerbals, and certainly there's a lot of science that can be done, but the Central Kerbin Alliance Network sees the potential for military applications for a submarine. A craft like this affords the ability to do reconnaissance missions unseen and in the safety under the waves. It also could be used as a bit of a deterrent, being that the enemy doesn't know when or where you could strike. Speaking of reconnaissance missions, it is about time that the Central Kerbin Alliance Network found out exactly what the communists were up to. Since experience with submarines is still very limited, the Central Kerbin Alliance Network thinks that an aircraft will be the best way to go. D.D. Kerbin has volunteered to fly the new K-2 reconnaissance aircraft over to the Communist Research Center. Hopefully, this craft will be able to fly too high and too fast for anything that the communists might throw at it. While not a short flight, the ability to fly supersonic will help keep the travel time bearable. Didi flies over the sea west of the Central Kerbin Alliance Network Research Facility towards this secret desert airfield. It appears that the communists were ready for our reconnaissance aircraft. Didi is taking anti-aircraft fire. Hopefully, Didi will be able to stay safe as he comes in for a good look at their facilities. Didi now, dangerously, slows his craft down to get a better look. The communists appear to have a well-developed launch site and airfield. That's a good enough look for Didi. Time to turn around and head home. So far, Didi's managed to remain unscathed. Now he just needs to increase throttle and get out of there. Oh no, something appears to be wrong. Didi's reporting some kind of engine malfunction. It's unclear whether Didi was hit by a piece of shrapnel or this is just teething issues with the new aircraft. Didi's gonna do his best to make his way home, but the prospects are not looking good. The good news for now is he is out of range of their anti-aircraft equipment. The closer he gets to friendly territory, the easier it will be to mount a rescue in case he's unable to make it all the way back to the research center. Didi reports he spotted something unusual below his aircraft. Why, it appears that Didi has found some kind of ancient ruins, some kind of desert temple complex. Didi has just radioed in that he's not going to risk flying all the way back. He is hoping that he will be able to land near these temples and maybe hide out in here and avoid any kind of communist patrols. There appears to be enough flat ground that a plane could reasonably land near here, but a precision aircraft like the K-2 was really not designed for improvised runways. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network's thoughts are with Didi as he attempts to make this dangerous landing. If he survives this, he can rest assured knowing that every effort will be made to bring him home. May the Kraken shine his face upon you. Stay tuned to Echo 3 for further developments in this ongoing story. Until next time, I will see you later.